The following video covers working with DXFs in Leica Smartworks. So first of all, if you want to work with a DXF inside of Smartworks, you need to locate your DXF files in the correct directory. For example, if I have my SD card I'm working with, you can see that this card contains several folders and these are pretty standard for Micro instruments. If I open up the data folder, this is where my DXF files need to be. Um, so you can see here I've got a few DXFs on my SD card. And all we're going to be working today is called Road Design 3D. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize that. You can see here that I've already got a controller running. I'm just going to create a new job. My job called DXF example, creating it on my SD card. I'm not going to be working with a code list here, I'm just going to go across to the third tab, which is entitled CAD files. And we can see those four files that were in the folder before. The file called Road Design 3D is here. I'm just going to highlight it, I'm going to attach it. I haven't actually imported this entire design as points and lines and converted them into Leica DBX files. This is merely a background image at this stage. I'll show it to you in a moment. I won't have a coordinate system today. And that's all fine, so I'm just going to store that. We want to have a look at the background DXF, we just need to go into the map screen. And there's a shortcut to the map screen just here on F6. Here we are in our job DXF example. I'm just going to select zoom all. And now I can see example DXF here. I'm just going to zoom in here, which you can do so by either pressing the little plus magnifying glass here on the right hand side. Or I can just select number two here on my controller. You can see a little plus above it. It's just going to zoom in. So here we can see I've got a bit of a road design here. Several so strings. And you'll notice that these strings are coloured differently to one another. Those colours have come straight in from the program that we made uh, our example data in. Okay, so at the moment I can select any of these strings here. And if we wanted to, if we use our stylus and select somewhere in this white space here and hold down, we'll see that we get the option to import these lines and actually convert them into the Leica file type so we can go and stake them out or we can clear our object selection. I'll just quickly show you a few of the different things that we can do with this information. We can edit what is displayed here and what is selectable. Um, if we go into the layers control area, the way that we get there is we select this double down, uh, two downward arrows here on the right. And then we select this option here. You can see that we've got several layers here. And most of those layers are selectable at the moment. There is a layer called Triangle that I've already hidden. And that layer actually contains some DTM data, uh, which we'll go over importing shortly. But for now, all I'm going to do is just uh, change the state of some of these objects. Um, and all that I'm interested in being able to select at the moment is the edge of bitumen, so I'll just change the road center line and the shoulder to still be visible but not be selectable. You can see that 
Edge of Bitumen are the only thing that will be able to select, so I'm going to store that. Okay, you'll notice here on the center line that I can't select the center line, nor can I select the shoulder. The only thing that I can select is the Edge of Bitumen lines. My next step that I'd like to do is uh, actually do some work with this Edge of Bitumen line here. So I'm just going to select it. I'm going to go over to this white space and hold down. You can see we get a whole bunch of different options here. We can import. We can use straight away in roads or reference line applications. We can open this line if we like. So I'm just going to uh, import this line right now. See so here it says one line has been imported. Just going to press uh, function configure. See here, this points and lines is an option here. Lines and line IDs are being shown. You can also see here that we've got some settings. So when I imported that line just then, I imported the line only. If I wanted to create points at all of the vertices, I could have had this option here open. And there's also an option to exclude some heights or apply 2D heights uh, when we import data. So I'm just going to select that create points and vertices uh, at the vertices of lines. I'm going to select this line here. I'm going to import it as well. I've just imported that point and lines there. And to select display points here, which will mean that the points are now displayed. I'm just going to display the heights. And you see here that it's created points at the vertices of this line that we just imported, but it has not done so on this other line that I had imported earlier. And also, I'll just quickly go back into my layers options. I'm just going to remove Edge of Bitumen from the CAD file. You can see those lines still remain because they've actually been imported. Last of all, with the tap map uh, and background DXF example, I'm just going to select this line that we imported earlier, hold down, I'm going to tell it to use this one in the application, which is reference line. I'm just going to select measure to line. Now, setting out this edge of bitumen line. Let's see here when I go to the map screen, that shows me some information about the line that I'm setting out. And if I walked over to this line, I could see change, offset, and cut and fill. The map screen is quite powerful for working with DXF data. And by using a background DXF, we've saved a lot of memory and a lot of information being imported that isn't being required. And we've only imported the DXF data that was relevant to what we were trying to do. That covers working with background DXFs. Next thing that I was going to quickly cover is importing DXF data when we want every single point line area to be imported. So if we want to do that we go into the import data area as I've just done and we go into import DXF data from SD card and then it's going to ask me which DXF file to use. I'm going to select road design 3D. I've got a configure option here. As you can see I can decide whether or not I want to create those points as I did before. Please note that this is going to import every single line and every single point in the file. So it's a lot more load on the controller to import all of this data rather than just the information we needed. Um, but this is an option. So I'm just going to select OK here. I've imported 
nearly 4,000 points. A thousand lines. So I'm going to the map screen now. Just going to quickly turn off all of the background CAD layer. So you can see that I've imported all of these points and lines at the moment. It's got a lot of information there. I just press the function button and select configure. I'll just turn off my point IDs and hide a point. Makes it a bit clearer, easier to see what's going on. That's the second method of working with DXF files, um, importing the entire file. It's not something that I recommend doing all the time. Now finally what I want to look at is triangular models, um, or tin models. The DXF file that contains the tin model must contain the triangles as 3D faces. The triangles cannot just be made up of 3D polylines or the model will not be imported correctly. This same design file that I've got actually contains a triangular model as well. It's going to go into jobs and data. It's going to create a new job quickly. DXF DTM example. And I haven't got any CAD file attached as a background CAD file. I'm going to select here, go to import data again. This time, instead of importing DXF data, I'm going to import DTM. So here's from my SD card the DXF file that I want to use, which again is the road design 3D. Select OK and import that triangular model. So you can see here the import of data is completed. We've imported 935 triangles. So I'm just going to go into the Stake to DTM application, which is found under Stakeout Plus. You can see here Stakeout DTM. Job that we're going to use. It's so one that we've just imported. We can see the DTM that we just imported. So that's the third way to work with DXF data in Leica SmartWorks Viva.